If you've ever tried to set up permissions in TrueNAS, you've probably run into terms like Unix, POSIX, and ACLs and wondered what they actually mean. Getting dataset permissions wrong can cause a lot of problems, shares that don't work, users who can't access files, or possibly even security issues based on people having access to things that they shouldn't. In this video, I'll break down TrueNAS permissions in simple terms, what each type does, when to use them, and how to set them up correctly. Before we jump into permissions, I want to thank today's sponsor, Twingate. If you've ever tried to access your home lab remotely, you probably know the pain that it can cause, opening ports on your router, assuming you're not in a double NAT situation, setting up dynamic DNS, messing with VPNs, and then still worrying about security. That's where Twingate comes in. Twingate lets you create a secure, private connection to your home lab without exposing it to the internet. No open ports, no complicated firewall rules. It's built for zero trust networking, which means every device and user is verified before they can access anything, which adds additional security that most VPNs don't provide. You can set it up in just a few minutes using Docker, a Linux container, or more. Recently, I was able to give secure remote access to editors to ensure they could access my Nextcloud server. After configuration, they can access Nextcloud from anywhere and allows me to ensure they can only access Nextcloud and not any of my other services. If you want a safer, simpler way to access your home lab remotely, check out Twingate using the link in the description. Thanks again to Twingate for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. So in order to properly understand this, we kind of have to start at the very beginning and it begins with users and groups. Now, generally, you want to manage permissions at a group level, but what I'll do is run through a quick user setup to show you exactly how to add users to groups, how you can create new groups for users, and this is basically the foundation for what we're going to do moving forward. So in the credentials section, you can create a new user, and what you're going to see is this auxiliary groups section here. Now, these are the groups that the user will be a part of. Now you also have this option here, create new primary group. If you select this, it will create a group for this user. Now, depending on what you select here, you can add the user to multiple groups. These are not groups that you would traditionally use, but I just wanted to show that you can add a user to multiple groups. Now, if the group does not exist that you wanna add the user to, you have to create it. The way you can create it is by going into the group section. So you'll see that I have a new group here for my user account, but if I wanted to, what I could do is I can create a new group, I could save the group, and then I can add members to that group. And as soon as I save it now, my Frank user account is part of this group. Now this is very important because you really wanna manage permissions at a group level. So with that in mind, let's get into it. So what we're going to do is in the data sets section, I created a few generic data sets that we're going to use to explain this. But you basically have a permission model that you select for a data set. So when you go in and add a data set, you're going to see this data set preset here. What this is doing is this is applying a permission model to this data set. So you have four options, generic, which is regular Unix permissions, SMB, which is NFS v4, Windows style permissions, apps, which is the same, but designed for apps, we'll get into this later, and then multi-protocol, which is for SMB and NFS share. So if you wanted to use SMB and NFS, that's what you do. So when you select this, you also will have the option to either create an SMB share or create an NFS share as well. But what you select here will ultimately determine the permission model that the data set is going to use. So what I did is I created four data sets that basically are just the default permission models for each of these. So we're gonna go through them one by one to show you the difference and show you how they work. So first we're gonna go into SMB. So in the bottom right here, what you will see is that when we edit it, we're getting the NFS v4 Windows styled ACLs. So what that means is that they're pretty advanced in the grand scheme of things, meaning that you can really narrow down exactly what you wanna do and get very granular rules. So the first thing to take note of is the owner and the owner group. So they're owned by root by default. You can go in and you can change this. So if I wanted to, I could change this to the group that we just selected, media. I can apply the group, save the access control list, and if we edit it again, 
what you'll see is the group at is going to change to media. So owner and group here match the owner and group here. And this is how they get permissions. And these are the exact permissions they get. So you'll see the owner has full control and the group has modify permissions. So let's assume you wanted to add a user that does not have permission to this. It's very simple. All you have to do is add an item and then select the exact user that should have permission. Now what you'll see at the bottom here is that you have different options that you can select. The ACL type determines if the user should have allow or deny permission. So if you want to deny access to a specific user, you would select deny. If you wanted to allow access for a specific user, you would allow it. And then you have a few options down here. So by default, for most people, you're going to use the basic permission type. And that allows you to read, modify, traverse, or have full control. So read is read permission, modify is edit, full control is full control of everything, and traverse is to navigate through this folder, which we'll get to later when we talk about nested data sets. For most people, this is what you're going to use. Now, if you had a pretty specific scenario that you were trying to account for, you can use advanced permissions. And what this allows you to do is basically select exactly what the user should or should not, in the case of deny, have permission to do. And this right here is the main benefit of the NFS v4 Windows style permissions. You have very granular controls. Now on the flag side here, you'll see you have basic and advanced as well. This determines the options that you have. The main thing you're trying to determine here is if you want newly created directories inside of this data set to inherit the permissions that you are specifying here. For most people, you're going to inherit. In cases where you want users to have access to the top level folders, but not necessarily, let's say, new folders, you would potentially use no inherit or advanced options. These are lesser used, but they give you granular controls. Now, the last thing to talk through is applying permissions recursively. So if you wanted to apply all of these permissions to all of the files and folders that currently exist in this data set, you have to make sure that you select this. This is a blank data set for me, so I am not going to do that. Now, the last thing to mention here is that the order is important. Now, it's not super important because TrueNAS automatically does it, but what I wanna show is that if you deny permission, let's say we deny modify permission for this user, and I save this access control, you'll see that the user is at the bottom here. And if I save the access control list and then I go back, you'll see it's at the top. So the order is important. Deny is above allow. You don't have to worry about it. I just want to highlight that. Now those are NFS v4 ACLs. When you select SMB as the data sets preset, that is what you'll use. But let's say you selected generic. Generic is Unix permissions. So if we edit the generic permissions here, what you'll see is that these are the default Unix permissions. You'll see Unix permissions here. And if you've ever been in a situation where you're using Linux and you see a command like chmod755, that means something. And it means the access that that folder grants to users and groups. So read is equal to four, write is equal to two, execute is equal to one. So for user, we have read, write, execute, which is four, two, one, so that's seven. For group, it's four, one, that's five. Other is four, one, that's five. That's how the permissions work. Now, Unix permissions are generally very rigid. And what I mean by that is you have an owner for the user and the group, you can apply different users or groups to this Unix permission set. You can change the permissions, but that's really all you can do. So there's only very specific cases, NFS is one of them, where you're going to use Unix permission. But let's say you needed to add more permissions, we'll say for an individual user or a group, to these Unix permissions. So what you do is you'd select set ACL at the bottom here. But what this actually does is we now are using POSIX. So think of POSIX as ACLs for Unix. That's kind of the easiest thing to think of it as. But it doesn't work the exact same way 
as SMB ACLs work. So when you come in here, we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna add an item, we're gonna to go to user, we're gonna select myself, we're gonna set read and write permissions, we're gonna save the access control list, and it's not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is because we did not set a mask entry. So if you're using POSIX, a mask entry is required. In order to do that, you would add an item and you would see mask. Now, mask must equal the greatest permission you are giving to any individual user or group. So what I mean by that is that read write was given to the Frank user account. That means the mask must have read and write permission as well. If the Frank user account only had read permission, the mask would only need read permission. So think of the mask as the highest permission that any user or group in this data set will need. So again, when you set ACLs on Unix, you get to POSIX. When you get to POSIX, you have to use a mask entry. After you set that, it will basically work the same way. You just will not have the granular controls that you saw earlier that Windows style ACLs provide. Now the multi-protocol is going to have Unix permissions as well. But what's interesting about it is that if you come to set ACL here, we'll give myself allow permission, modify permission. What you'll see is that it's switched to NFS v4 permissions. So for multi-protocol, by default, it will start as Unix permissions. And if you decide to use ACLs, it will automatically transition to NFS v4. Now, the last one to talk through is apps. So what you'll see with apps is that it is by default NFS v4. And if we edit it, the only real thing to be aware of is that it gives the user apps permission to modify. The only thing you really need to be aware of for apps is that anytime you're using anything inside of the app section, meaning that you're writing to a data set from an app, you should use the apps permission model. If you didn't use the apps permission model, you can just give the user apps modify permission and it will do the same thing. So now what we're gonna do is talk about nested permissions for data sets. So if we come in here and we create a nested generic data set, now we have a nested data set. And inside of the permissions here, you'll see I selected generic, so we have regular Unix permissions. What's important to understand here is that this data set can have different permissions than its parent. So in this case, the parent is generic. But anything that you specify here so let's say that this was only going to be used for me. I am now going to be the owner of this. Any user that you specify here must have execute permissions on the parent data set. So if I come here, so I'm just going to change this data set here. And now what we're saying is that the Frank user account does not have permission to this generic data set, which is the parent of the nested data set where I do have permission. If we come in here and try and access it, it's not going to work. Now, if I do the same on the exact data set path, it's not going to work either. And the reason for that is because my individual user account does not have permission to execute. So execute permission is required if a nested data set has unique permissions or let's say permissions that the parent does not have. So if I come back to this and I set execute permission for others, and I save this, if we come back here and we double click in, you will see that it will work. And then I can access the nested data set as well. So that's for Unix permissions or POSIX permissions. For SMB, the only difference is that rather than having execute permissions, you would have to have traverse permissions. Basically does the same thing. So the last example I'll give you is that let's assume that you had a group that had edit permission on an SMB share, but you wanted to deny write permission for an individual user. So the way that you would do that is by using the advanced options here. So I just set this up to show you how it would work, but Frank is part of the built-in users group, which gives modify permission, but I don't want Frank to have write permission. So I would use advanced permissions and I would select the exact permissions that apply to write. I would deny those, but if I tried to write, it would not work. So the last thing I wanna talk through is when you should use Unix, 
POSIX, or NFS v4 window style ACLs. If you're using SMB, you want to use NFS v4 window style ACLs. It's going to be more granular and it works better with SMB. Now, let's say you just had to give an individual user or group access to something. That's when Unix kind of makes sense. You don't need anything more than that. And then POSIX is best for, let's say, Linux or NFS shares where you just have basic permissions. It will work with SMB, but it's not ideal. So kind of think of NFS v4 ACLs as complex rules. If you need to define very complex rules, that's what you're going to have to use. If you're just going to have basic generic rules, that's where Unix or POSIX starts to make a little bit more sense. The reality is that you can get just about anything working, but when you're creating a data set, you really have to think about what you're going to be storing inside of it, who's going to have to access it, and then at that point, work your way back to determine which permission model makes the most sense. So I know this was a lot crammed into one video, but if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments. But other than that, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.